pulling two blocks. You pull horizontally on block B in figure, causing both blocks to move together as a unit. For this moving system, make a carefully labeled free body diagram of block A if part A, the table is frictionless and part B, there is friction between block B and the table and the pull is equal in magnitude to the friction force on block B due to the table. Okay, let's start with part A. Now, the problem states that blocks A and B move together as a single unit under the influence of this pull. And in part A, there is no friction on the table. For block A to be able to move with block B, it's clear that there has to be friction at the interface between block A and block B. So let's start with noting this observation. For blocks A and B to, to be able to move together we must have friction between A and B because I need a force on block A to the right uh, because B is moving to the right A must be moving to the right so I need a force that's going to cause an acceleration on uh, block A uh, since B is pulled to the right This friction must oppose the pulling force. Okay. So, under the influence of this pulling force, there is no friction between the table and block B. Uh, there are two possibilities. The friction between A and B is uh, high enough to uh, cancel the pull force, in which case I would have uh, basically either no motion or constant velocity motion, uh, or I should have uh, acceleration of block A and B as a single unit, in which case I should also have friction at this interface because block A has to be accelerating to the right together with block B. So for both scenarios, I have to have uh, friction between block A and block B. Now, uh, let's start with the free body diagram of block B. So I'm going to consider the free body diagram for block B first. What are the forces acting on block B? So in a free body diagram we consider the system as a single particle, so block B considered as a single particle will feel uh, its weight mbg and then there will be the force, because there's a contact between A and B, force exerted by A on B. So what is the force exerted on A on B? It, the weight of A. So the total force pointing downward will be mass of block A plus mass of block B times G. Mass of block B times G is the weight of block B, and mass of A times G is the force exerted by A on B. The normal force on the table that is exerted by the table on block B is opposing uh, this uh, total force pointing down. There is the force of pull. Uh, we're, that's, we are pulling this to the right. And 
uh, because the motion is to the right, there has to be kinetic friction uh, pointing to the left uh, that is in between blocks A and B. Because there is motion, there has to be kinetic friction. Okay, and if I set up the coordinate system here, this is Y, this is X axis. The net force on the Y axis has to be equal to zero because there is no motion, there's no acceleration on the Y axis. So the normal force exerted by the table must be balancing the total weight of blocks A and B. The net force on the x-axis must be equal to a mass of block B times the common acceleration A of blocks B and A since they move together. The pull force is to the right, so it's F pull I hat. And the kinetic friction is opposing it, minus Fk between A and B. This must be equal to mass of uh, block B times the common acceleration a okay so let me divide this page now i'm going to consider free body diagram for block a which was the question in part a now block a modeled as a single particle here uh, will feel its weight pointing down, which is mass of block A times the gravitational acceleration G, there will be a normal force exerted by block B on block A. This is in response to the weight of block A, so it's normal force uh, pointing up. And then block A, because block A exerts a friction force on block B pointing to the left, Block B exerts a friction force on block A pointing to the right due to Newton's third law action reaction. So the kinetic friction on block A is pointing to the right, the uh, same magnitude opposite in direction. And that completes all the forces acting on block A. Therefore, this is the free body diagram for this situation. And if I were to analyze what is going on here, the net force on the y-axis must be equal to zero because there is no acceleration on the y-axis. The force exerted by B on A, the normal force on A, must be balancing its weight, mag. And the net force on the x-axis must be equal to mass of block A times the common acceleration of A and B, which is A. The kinetic friction between A and B is equal to mass of block A times A. It's the only force pointing to the right, and I know that this kinetic friction between A and B is the coefficient of uh, is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction for the AB interface uh, multiplied by the normal force acting on A. So therefore, this is the coefficient of kinetic friction for AB interface times mass of block A times the gravitational acceleration G. So that completes my analysis for part A, the situation that we encounter when there is no friction on the table. Now uh, we have friction on the table between block B and the table, and the pull is equal in magnitude to the friction force on block B due, uh, due to the table. So uh, let me start with free body diagram of block B. Now, block B modeled as a single particle here, again, uh, on the y-axis, will feel the total weight, mass of block A times mass of block B times the gravitational acceleration G. The same situation, the table will exert a normal force, a normal force acting on block B, which is opposing the total weight, there is the force uh, of pull 
F pull to the right. And now there is kinetic friction between uh, block B and the table, which is equal in magnitude to the uh, force of pull. So there is kinetic friction between block B and the table. So this is again my y-axis, this is my x-axis. So uh, since this uh, friction force is already cancelling the force of pull, there is no other friction that block B will feel. So there will be no friction between A and B at this point because this friction force is cancelling this uh, pull force. So the net force on the y-axis must be equal to zero. So the normal force on block B is balancing the total weight MA plus MB times G. The net force on the x-axis is zero because the kinetic friction is canceling the uh, pulling force. If pull is equal to the kinetic friction between block B and table T, where the kinetic friction between block B and table T is the coefficient of kinetic friction for the bl uh, block B table uh, interface times the normal force acting on block B. So again, here is my argument. Since the friction force, kinetic friction between block B and the table T, uh, balances the pull force, the net force will be zero and uh, there is nothing to oppose here. So there is no space left for friction between blocks A and B. So there is no friction between A and B. As you know, for friction to occur, we must have a force that we are trying to oppose. So uh, in that case, since the, the motion will be under the influence of no net force, the motion has to be a constant velocity motion. There is no net force that will cause an acceleration. Okay, so finally, Let's plot uh, the free body diagram for block A in this situation. So it will be the same free body diagram except there is no friction. So in this case, the block A will feel its weight, MA times G. There will be a normal force, force exerted by block B on block A. This is the normal force acting on A, and that's it because there is no friction. So this is my answer. And in this case, the net force on the y-axis is zero. The normal force is balancing uh, the weight MA times G. The net force on the x-axis is zero, so that we will have a constant velocity motion of block A. So let's summarize what we did here. We considered the motion of two blocks A and B as a single unit under the influence of a pull to the right that is applied to block B for two different cases, one in which we have no friction between B and the table, there is friction between A and B, and one in which we have friction between the table and B, but that friction opposing the pulling force is equal in magnitude to the pulling force. So that means there is no room left for friction between A and B. So in the first situation, when the table is frictionless, for them to move together, we must have friction between A and B because some force, friction force, must be opposing this pulling force. So uh, on block B, there will be friction pointing to the left, which will be pointing to the right on block A. So friction exerted by A on B is to the left. Friction exerted by B on A will be to the right. And um, this basically will end up uh, giving us the following free body diagram for block B. The net force acting to the right, the force of pull minus Fk uh, between A and B, 
will be mass of b times the common acceleration a and that uh, will also uh, indicate that there will be a net force acting on block a to the right which will be responsible for the uh, acceleration common acceleration a of block a now on the other hand if i have a force of friction uh, kinetic friction on the why kinetic friction because it says it's moving so in that case this kinetic friction will be opposing the uh, pull pulling force and for the kinetic friction between the block b and table t, t uh, we have uh, the force exactly cancelling the pulling force leaving no room for friction between a and b to develop so uh, the net force on block b will be zero so it will be a constant velocity motion of block b and uh, the kinetic friction will be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times normal force on B. Whereas in the previous situation, the kinetic friction between A and B is equal to coefficient of kinetic friction for the AB interface times normal force acting on A. So in that case, because I have no friction developing on A, uh, the normal force on A will be balancing its weight and that will be it. So um, there is no need for a force on the x-axis in order to have constant velocity motion.